Breakthroughs in neuroscience can take decades, born of sheer determination and discipline. A good scientist needs to have rigor and creativity. Trust your own intuition about what's important. Serendipity can play a role. An unexpected discovery may create new opportunities for progress. You get this kind of feeling of awe when you see something that suddenly reveals how things are working. And then there are discoveries that are made when an enduring problem is viewed from a completely new perspective. A different way of thinking can transform a field and lead to breakthroughs. And we need new ideas, new approaches, and the new insights could lead to new science. The Brain Prize has celebrated outstanding scientists since 2011. Today, it is the largest personal award in the field. Our purpose is to bring discoveries to lives. And the Brain Prize is our way of celebrating people with bold ideas that transform science. And what really excites me is when we see those ideas transform into something tangible something that can improve people's lives. And this year is a shining example of that. Which scientist's groundbreaking work has been recognized with the world's largest award for neuroscience? Today, we reveal the winners of the Brain Prize 2025. Each year, Chair Andreas Maya Lindenberg and the Brain Prize Selection Committee face the daunting challenge of deciding who will be this year's winners. It's a huge task considering hundreds of nominees from all fields of neuroscience and from all over the world. What kinds of things are you looking for in a potential prize-winning nomination? We're interested in awarding the Brain Prize to research that is highly relevant and important. We also want it to be exciting in the sense that it is awarded to something that is potentially transforming neuroscience, opening up new vistas, new therapies. And how difficult was it to choose this year's winners? Um, you know, it's an embarrassment of riches, so to think, do we give this for something that's very, very established, or are we giving it for something that's a little more recent, something that people are just getting uh, excited about. And this year's Brain Prize is definitely the second bucket, and we are uh, looking forward uh, to seeing how this will be uh, received by the public and the field. So which outstanding scientists have earned the distinction of receiving the Brain Prize 2025? From an exceptional field of nominations, from all areas of neuroscience and countries around the world, the Selection Committee has chosen to award this year's Brain Prize to two scientists. They're being recognized for their groundbreaking work in pioneering a new field, cancer neuroscience. The Brain Prize 2025 goes to Professor Michelle Mondre and Professor Frank Winkler. I'm incredibly surprised, grateful, and very excited. This is such a great honor for me personally and also su shines such a bright light on the emerging field of cancer neuroscience. I'm really deeply honored. I'm gracious. I am moved and um, yeah, just can't tell with words what this means for me. This was the one of the best, if not the, the best um, time of my life. What about the winning research this year made it stand out? The topic we are awarding the prize this year for is called Cancer Neuroscience. And uh, what it is awarded for is a really a revolutionary way to think about how tumor cells and neurons in the brain, cells in the brain interact with each other in a way that promotes uh, the tumor's growth, the tumor's invasion into tissue, and also the tumor's resistance to treatment. That's really a new way to think about both the brain and cancer. And it points directly the way to new 
treatment. So this all together uh, is a very nice package that got us all quite excited. Michelle Monge is a neurologist and a neuro-oncologist. Her research focuses on aggressive brain tumors in children, like diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, or DIPG. DIPG mainly affects children aged 5 to 10. There is no effective treatment, and most children with the disease survive for less than one year. The way that I was taught about brain cancers were cells containing a you know, mutation, an oncogenic mutation that dysregulated their growth properties such that they would grow uncontrollably, occupy space, and destroy the brain around it. Now, seeing patients with these tumors, that didn't make a lot of sense to me because the brain was not destroyed. In fact, the brain was remarkably preserved in, in terms of function. When you meet somebody with, for example, glioblastoma or diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma or one of these other terrible brain cancers, and you go look at the MRI scan, a huge region of the brain or brainstem is involved by the cancer that is diffusely infiltrating it. it looks like it's integrating into it. And yet the patient has very few symptoms at this time point. It made me wonder if this was a cancer that somehow needed the nervous system to function. And what we've discovered is that this cancer, just like its normal cellular counterparts, is profoundly regulated by the activity of neurons themselves, that in an activity-dependent way, neurons promote the growth of these cancers, both through secreted activity-regulated growth factors but also through direct electrochemical communication across bona fide electrophysiologically functional synapses. These cancers are influencing neural circuits to drive a vicious cycle of activity-dependent glioma growth and glioma-dependent um, um, neuronal hyper-excitability and remodeling. Frank Finkler is a neuro-oncologist studying glioblastomas, the most common and aggressive brain tumors in adults. They account for 50% of all primary malignant brain tumors. There is no cure, and the median survival after diagnosis is only 15 to 18 months. It was clear there's an enormous um, medical need to understand this disease and then to develop new therapies that are based on, these, on this understanding. And this is exactly what we have done with our cancer neuroscience work. We discovered that when glioblastoma cells colonize the brain, the tumor cells extend very long membrane tubes that are reminiscent of neurites during neurodevelopment. So they um, in, scan the brain, they invade the brain doing this, and then increasingly interconnect to one communicating and resistant multicellular network. And these networks are really wired into the normal brain. They connect with normal brain exercise. They connect with normal brain neurons. The idea at this time that a neuron will form a functional excitatory bona fide synapse with a non-neuronal cell was wild, completely wild. Um, but in the end, that was what we found. But we in Heidelberg were not the only ones discovering crazy things. Frank invited me to come to Heidelberg. I had never met him. This was in 2015. We were sitting in this very office. And I could tell there was something we were both not sharing. And, um, you know, I said, you know, we discovered something kind of crazy. And Frank said, we discovered something really crazy. And so I said, well, you know, do you think there are synapses? And he said, I do think there are synapses. And I said, I do too. And so it was wonderful from that moment on. So then we had this, you know, moment of relief. I think we both shared this moment of, oh, I'm not crazy. <laughs> you also found this. That's wonderful because it means it's true. It took us a short time to find out that scientifically and personally we like it, it, each other so much that it's not time to run uh, for publication or not. Um, um, no way to scoop each other, but just to work together on this crazy discovery. So in, in a really beautiful way, uh, this work came together with the discovery of the synapses between the healthy and the cancerous brain. That is something that 
Michel Monge came at from a molecular angle looking at children and Frank Winkler came at from looking at networks and structure in adults. And this is uh, what we now think is the birth of this new field of cancer neuroscience. And what does this winning research hold for the future and future treatments? So since this is a completely new way of thinking about how these tumor cells arise and grow and persist with the standard therapies, uh, this gives us new avenues into treatment. We think this will have important implications for the treatment of gliomas and glioblastomas. Once a patient is diagnosed with a brain tumor, surgery is often one of the first steps. Complete removal is rare, and the tumor inevitably returns. In the city of Aarhus in Denmark, neurosurgeon Hannes Rosendahl Korshoi treats patients with these conditions. How fundamental is the work of this year's Brain Prize winners to the entire field of cancer treatment? The work of the two winners is absolutely fundamental for the whole field. Instead of viewing these diseases as isolated entities or masses, we now know that they are part of uh, the brain circuit and network receiving input from even distant neurons to grow and spread. For me, it's been um, an eye-opener. How did the field view cancer before the work of this year's Brain Prize winners? I think before we considered gliomas and brain cancer in the light of more traditional hallmarks of cancer. So for decades we've been using surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy to treat these patients. And although we have moved the outcome of the patients, it's still very poor. So these new discoveries, they open up entirely new aspects of the biology to, uh, to explore, but they also open up new drugs to explore, so new ways of inhibiting synaptic input, cellular connections, etc. So we can use a new toolbox now, and I'm very hopeful that this will benefit the patients. The work of the winners of the Brain Prize 2025 offers a new perspective on these devastating diseases, opening up exciting opportunities for discovery and treatment. I am grateful for many reasons to the Brain Prize. And one of the reasons that I am so grateful is that at this moment that the field is really nascent but burgeoning, I think the Brain Prize is going to wonderfully shine a light on the field. I think it's going to hopefully inspire more neuroscientists to come into the field. It's a fantastic prize for the field, the emergent field of cancer neuroscience that now gets the most important, most precious neuroscience prize in the world. Um, this will greatly help to develop the field forward. And I'm just really excited to, to see where this field will take us, will take the field and will, will take us towards better, better opportunities for, for better outcomes for our patients. Dear Michel, dear Frank, on behalf of the Selection Committee and the Lundberg Foundation, my warmest congratulations on winning the Brain Prize 2025.